get there. Well, we welcome also uh, a couple of our beloved priests. So uh, Father Adam Urbaniak is our vicar general. So he's second in command of the whole diocese. Uh, Father uh, Godfrey Ando is also the rector of the cathedral. And then Father Joseph Mensa is new to our area, but uh, will be serving here in the diocese of Biloxi in a special way. Again, welcome again to all of our judges and all of our uh, officials, both city and state, and then also all of our uh, folks that uh, are part of our legal system in any way, welcome. You know, the church in the Gospel of Mark, which was really the first gospel written, uh, preserved this particular gospel, I think, for each of us, because it, it, it does a couple of things. The first thing it does is it shows the invitation Jesus gives to every single one of us, every single one of us. Uh, and so the, the invitation happens when a young man comes to him and asks, what must I do to inherit everlasting life? Now, that question is really our question. What must I do to inherit everlasting life? Because we know this life is passing. Uh, one of my elder priests who has some illnesses and stuff said, none of us are getting out of this alive. <laughs> he had a good sense of humor. But it's about our relationship in the end with Jesus Christ, because that's actually what he challenges the young man with. He first says to him, did you follow the commandments of Moses? Did you follow the commandments? And the young man said, yeah, I followed the commandments from the earliest part of my life. And then he says to him something that caught him. Then give away all you have and come follow me. In other words, make me the center of your life. Make me the center of your life. And the young man, of course, we hear in the gospel said, oh, he left away sad. But you have to wonder, when he got home, he didn't see Jesus anymore. When he got home, were all of his possessions really what was going to satisfy him? And especially with the question he asks, were all of his possessions going to give him eternal life? Because that's actually what Jesus was offering him, eternal life. You have to wonder, did he come back? In any event, that question is our question. What do we need to do to receive eternal life? To enter into eternal life? And Jesus actually gives us the answer. He says, come follow me. Come follow me. Fall in love with me. And I will show you what to do. Fall in love with me and I will show you the way to live. Fall in love with me and I will show you how much God the Father loves every single one of us and loves you and me very personally. So that actually becomes part of our question. How do we inherit eternal life? We inherit, inherit eternal life in prayer. In other words, speaking to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why we need to be people of prayer every day. That's why. To stay in touch with eternal life. To stay in touch with the Jesus who loves us into being. The second is to make the word of God really a part of our lives. And that's the word of God that actually speaks to us every single day. I know for myself when I'm praying the the liturgy of the hours, and it's, it's really all the word of God all throughout the day, there are just moments when the Holy Spirit goes, BAM! If any of you were asleep, that's, it's over, okay? <laughs> it's over. It, it just nails me, nails me. And sometimes it convicts me also. Have I loved my neighbor as myself enough? And for us who are married, have I loved my wife or husband enough? 
Have I loved my son or daughter enough? Have I loved my grandchildren enough? And I'm about to have a great grand niece. So have I loved them enough? Enough. And then the third piece for this in the very beginning is, you know, Jesus actually gives him himself to us every day in love. He gives us in prayer, yes. He gives us through in the word of God, yes. But he also gives us his body and blood in this cathedral and every church at this altar. And he offers us his life of eternal life in his body and blood. That's what we're receiving in Holy Communion. And those of us that come up for a communion prayer, that's what we're praying for. To taste, literally taste eternal life. And to let that be part of the center of who we are as God's people, as Christians, as Roman Catholics, as followers of Christ. Now, all of this started one big discussion among the apostles we heard in Mark's gospel. Because they saw the, the young man leave. And Jesus, they said, well, <laughs> Jesus says to them, it's harder for a rich person to enter the kingdom of heaven than a camel to enter the eye of a needle. Now the eye of the needle actually is the small gate in Jerusalem to enter the city. And a camel can't get through it. No way. Only people can duck under to get in to the city. So they're all saying, well then how in the world can any of us be saved? Any of us. And Jesus gives us the second truth of the gospel. And he says, for human beings, it is impossible. But for God, all things are possible. Now that would be a normal moment when I'd say, wow. In fact, I don't think I can hold it. Wow! Everybody's awake again still, I hope, right? <laughs> I mean, it's really quite profound that God's love calls us into heaven. Now, not just at our death. God holds, calls us into heaven now. Now. So part of what Jesus was saying to the disciples and he's saying to us is, we place our lives in God's hands. Place our lives in God's hands. And let God guide us. Let God shape us. Let God form us. Let God bring us to eternal life. That's really what he's telling us today. So we pray during this Eucharist for all of our judges, especially all of our legal system folk, all of our lawyers, all of our city officials, all our state officials, we pray for you. But we pray in a special way during this mass for those two graces. The first is, what must I do to attain eternal life? And that is to follow Jesus. And then the second is to place ourselves really in God's hands. Because in the end, it's not about us earning heaven. It's about us being guided to heaven, drawn to heaven, loved into heaven by a God, a God the Father that loves us so very deeply. And we ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Amen. We'll try that again. <laughs> we ask all of this through Christ our Lord.